Like and follow Street Voices. What's your worst experience out here? When I got kidnapped. How, how that happened and what? I was in the 80s. Like, oh my gosh, it's gonna sound so fucked up, but like, what I would do is I would pepper spray them and like blind them and then <laughs> take their shit and run. <laughs> What's your name? Where are you from? My name is Honey, and I was born in San Bernardino. How old are you, Honey? I'm 20. How long you been out here on Fig? Um, since I was 17. Since you were 17? How old are you now? 20. 20? <laughs> yeah. Um, damn, that's a couple years already. What kind of experiences have you had out here? Um, experiences? Like, have you gotten robbed? Have you gotten raped, kidnapped, anything like that? Uh, now, I, I've been robbed, I've been almost kidnapped, um, I've been raped, yeah, and, um, yeah, I've actually, yeah, I've almost been kidnapped and I've been kidnapped before, too, all out here, so. All, all on this one street here? Yeah. What, what brings you back out here after almost losing your life? Because it's the life. <laughs> it's to be expected, you know, so. I mean... I want you to dig a little deeper than that. When I first came out here, like I said, I was 17. You know, I was obviously a minor, so, and I met a pimp and he was like 35. And um, and he got me like a fake ID and everything. He was like, he just turned out to be some weirdo who liked little girls, but I had no idea what I was doing. I was out here walking and um, I was making a lot of money. I was just getting picked up by everybody. And I had no idea, like, you know, I was seeing other hoes and I'm like, you know, what are we really like doing out here? Like, I had no idea what I was making money for. I was just giving it away to pimps and shit until, you know, I got more experience and I start, I'm like, okay, now if I'm going to be out here selling my body, then, you know, it got to be for a reason. Like, I'm going to stack up to go to school, go to cos. I'm going to go to school to do makeup and eventually like i'm gonna just go from there like i don't plan on doing this shit for years and years and years like other girls okay well what's uh what's your rates what do you charge for um so if i get picked up for some head then that's 100 if you want sex and that's 200 i charge pretty high and that's only because like i said the I got more experience out of this and then I finally bagged my first sugar daddy and he didn't want to fuck me like at all do anything sexual he was just giving me five thousand dollars like all the time so you know I'm like yeah I'm expensive do you still have your sugar daddy yeah I do but I mean he's paying you well what are you doing out here I just love money you know like I can't just I don't want to just live off of one guy who's giving me five thousand dollars here and there like I need to be making a thousand dollars every day if I can how does this robbery happen um my first day when I was 17 my first first day Damn. um there was this Mexican guy that picked me up and I was green like really naive I didn't know you know he pulled over in this alley right here behind this chevron that we're at we dated in this alley and we had sex and everything and after that he pulled out a knife and put it to my throat and was like yeah i'm not gonna take your money i'm not gonna rob you i'm just gonna take my money back that i gave you and he did and then he told me to get the fuck out or he was gonna stab me and i just ran out the car and i'm like wow this is crazy so that was my first night and then a couple other times when i got robbed um it was it was when I was dating black guys when I first started I used to just get in the car with anybody I don't do that anymore though and nothing really bad happens to me now because I don't do bad to other people I don't be out here robbing tricks and shit because it's just gonna all come back on me eventually so when I first started and I was out there robbing tricks and shit that's why a lot of bad shit was happening to me mm, you felt like it was bad karma kind yeah of bad. it was so I had to stop that shit. Talk to us about uh, robbing the tricks. How'd you do that? <laughs> that this shit sounds funny. Oh my gosh! And, um, and then I know there's some that went bad too. Robbery gone bad. No? I mean, like, luckily, no. Like, I've gotten threatened a lot, but like, nothing really ever happened to me. Like while I was robbing a trick, and um. What I would do is, you know, I wouldn't, 
I would just take their wallets and shit and I would, oh my gosh, it's gonna sound so fucked up, but like, so when I would get picked up and we would date and I wouldn't wanna, cause what I don't like doing, I don't like having sex with them with tricks. I don't like doing anything sexual. I know, you know, that's what I'm supposed to do most of the time, but I don't like doing it. So that's why I was robbing them. And I would, um, I would get, I would go for the dumb Mexicans who barely like spoke English and shit. And they would always have a lot of money and everything. And so. <laughs> Cold blooded girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. And how many times did you do that? Before I did you it a lot. I was doing it like every day. Like I was doing it a lot for like two years and then I stopped. Wow. Because man, like, they, like, was that, were you making good money robbing the tricks? Yeah, I was, I really was. And that's why I was doing it. Because the thing is, is there will be a trick that will lowball me and pick me up for like, and you know, you can't be doing this type of job. You can't be thirsty. And I was thirsty for some money. So, you know, that's why I was robbing them and shit and taking more than I should have. And then every, every time I did something bad, something bad happened to me. So. What's, what's your worst experience out here? When I got kidnapped. How, how that happened and what? I was in the 80s, like kind of where you picked me up. And um, I was walking, there was this pimp. He was like this, he was from Hoover's. He, I was in the Hoover's. And he pulled up on me and he was telling me if I didn't run that he would have to, um, that he was gonna pick me up and throw me in his car. So he literally stopped all the traffic. It was in broad daylight. And he picked me up and threw me in his car and I'm screaming and shit. And then he has a whole nother bitch in there and then his homies in there. And he just, he dropped them off and he's riding around with me the whole, like for hours, just talking to me. Like, I just want you to pay me, you're so pretty. And just all type of weird shit. And at the time I had a pimp, so I was calling him and he's on the phone telling me like, well, you shouldn't have let him pick you up and throw you in the car. So that's on you. Isn't so, he supposed to fucking come and exactly, your ass? Exactly, exactly. So, I couldn't leave and get out the car because the pimp, the guy that picked me up and threw me in the car, he's telling me like, yeah, your pimp doesn't give a fuck. So, you know, I'm going to keep you like there's there's no point. So eventually I'm sitting there crying, boohoo crying for hours like and then he's like, OK, obviously you don't want to be here. I'm going to let you go. But when I drop you off, you're going to get out and run. And then if you don't run, I'm going to uh, pick you up and throw you in the car again. So when he let me out, I ran. And then I called the same guy and he came to pick me up. And so now I don't pay anybody because um, there's no point. You know, pimps out here, they say they're out here to protect us and shit, but it's like, we're the ones out here. They can't get to us fast enough if anything happens. So I don't get it. Right, right. So, so right now you don't have a pimp? No. And and you would never rec so would you recommend other women to get pimps? I mean, honestly, like I don't I, I I just personally don't see the the point in having one. I really don't. I mean, I feel like anything we're out here doing, we could do it by ourselves. Like, <laughs> there's no point of having one. But a lot of girls, they they're scared, and in their heads, they feel like in this game, they need a pimp. So. Right, right. Well, that, that's kind of how you started out, right? Because yep. you were, you were, didn't know what you were doing and you got a pimp. Yeah. I want to learn how to do makeup so I could do it on other girls. Sometimes you get people that, that comment like, yo, I want to, I want to save her. I'll take her away from this life. Yeah. What do you think about that? Um, I mean, shit. Cause honestly, like I said, when you pulled up on me, I seen, I've seen videos of this. Like I know this one girl that you picked up before, honey. And you did an interview with her and shit. And I was looking at the comments and, you know, a lot of people are saying things like that. Like how, you know, a lot of the girls have a lot of potential and they shouldn't be out here and shit like that. And I don't really know. I feel like that's how they're looking at shit from their point of view. But Dude, you saw the interview with Honey? Yeah. Have you seen her? I haven't seen her at she's all. She's in jail. What? Yeah, she's been in jail for a while. She's in jail in um, D.C. DC? How the mm -hmm. hell she get a DC? I have no idea. <laughs> what she go to jail for? Something with a pimp that she's with. No way. Yeah, she had a warrant or something. They caught her and she's fighting a case or some shit now. She seems so nice too. Yeah, she is. The way I came into the game, I didn't have to, and I still don't have to. 
but I know that there's a lot of girls who like because I'm I grew up in the system and shit and that's where a lot of these holes are you know that's how they're becoming holes because they're runaways from the group homes and all that shit and that's how I became a hoe but honestly I feel like if if you're gonna do it um make sure you just you you're doing it to to be in it for a little bit and get your money and get the fuck out because the way the game is looking now like it's just getting bad like you know these pimps aren't really you know they're not there's a difference between a real pimp and a, a pimp a guy who's just calling himself a pimp and these girls are out here choosing just anybody and giving all their money away <clears throat> to build up another guy's life to get them into a new car and all that type of bullshit like no nope, i'm not finna do all that like i'm i'm the one out here selling my ass so <laughs> the fuck so yeah but if you don't have to do it i don't recommend it if you don't have to if you're able to go get some money in a different way then do that because <laughs> this life is um it can be draining and depressing and you can you can lose your life over this shit for real you said you grew up in the system. Talk to me about it. Yeah, I was. I've been in the system since I was t like 13, and I was always running, and I was always having sex. I was fast in the ass. Like I was having a lot, a lot of sex, and so that's pretty much. Once I started fucking for money, I'm like, why not fuck for money? But I didn't have. I don't have any family. All my sisters and brothers were in the system with me. We were all separated. And then um, from there, I ended up in L.A. and different states and shit on my own so when I was 16. And then 17, I started doing this. <clears throat> and um, but, uh, what about your family? Like uh, you got mom, you got dad. Yeah, my mom, she's a she's kind of like a hoe, too. I'm I, I wouldn't be surprised if she was out here, but she knows what I do. She doesn't like it. And now my oldest sister, she knows that I'm a hoe now. So she's she recently just got into the game. My older sister. So it's like and for me, I don't like it. Like seeing my sister doing this now because she sees me doing it. It's like, damn, what the fuck? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, are you guys having you guys do it together out here? Yeah, to look out we for do. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how old is she? She's 25. Oh, so she's barely a little, a little bit yeah. older. Yeah. Okay. And she was married. She was a square. She was married for like eight years with her baby daddy. And then, you know, they were broke. Like, they were always fighting and they were broke. And so she ended up selling her pussy. <laughs> right. Um, what about your dad? Um, my dad is, he's mentally sick, so like from drugs from yeah from drinking way? he has like a bat like a fucked up liver and heart problems and shit he just had a stroke so he can't like he can barely remember shit and but he was really abusive when we were younger so i don't really have a relationship with him that was my question i feel like i feel like a lot of the women that end up out here um come from broken homes and shit exactly yeah um, and and a lot of them don't have fathers like to kind of guide them, help them out. Exactly. You know, teach, teach them, teach them. Because if right I game. did, I wouldn't be out here. <laughs> to right. be honest. Do you have kids? No, I don't have kids. Do you have a boyfriend? No. Have you had a boyfriend while you've been working out here? No. Okay. Yeah, I have an Instagram. What's your Instagram? It's Honey Wins with two N's and two S's. <laughs> uh, spread it out for the slow H people. H O N E Y W I N N S S. People can hit you up on on your social media to yeah. offer you work or, yeah, or to anything. hire you for modeling. Right? Uh huh. And I post, you know, make sure you guys um, stay tuned and on my stories because I post constantly on my stories every day. Watch my highlights, all that because my shit is lit. I'm always posting some exclusive shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And um, so, so uh, tell us uh, your Instagram again. Honey Wins. It's H O N E Y W I N N S S. So, what, what kind of what kind of freaky shit has the the tricks told you out here? They want it done. Um, a lot of them want to eat my pussy, and a lot of them um they want to do bear, and a lot of them want to do anal. Um, I got picked up by one yesterday actually, and um. 
he was telling me I've, I've seen him before but I didn't want to date him because he was telling me how a lot of he has a hard time picking up girls out here because his dick is 11 inches and so we dated at my room and shit and like we were chilling I made him take pictures of me and everything and like we were supposed to chill for like an hour and he paid me a good money and everything but like when it came down to like fucking I told him straight up like dude I'm not I'm not about to fuck your I'm not gonna do that and he was cool as shit I got him drunk and shit so like you know I just kind of <laughs> I kind of have to play a role and then when it gets to that point it's like dude I'm not fucking you I mean shit his dick was just way too big and he was cool with that but his dick was huge like really really huge and I'm not that's one thing I don't like doing I don't like fucking on big ass dicks like especially out here dating tricks and shit you're not finna stretch my pussy out for no fucking <laughs> hundred dollars like no all right so 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 size does matter to you yeah it really does and 11 inches is, is a no-go that's no 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 <laughs> and a lot of girls out here like they don't really only do it for the money they do it because they like to be they like fucking so you know and that's disgusting like it really is that's nasty to me I had some girls the other day where she said she was I just love to fuck like I'm yeah see loving. and see when I first started and I was like I said I was having sex a lot so I'm like you know what I might as well get paid for it and I used to love having sex that's why I even started but now hell no I don't I don't like fucking no more I don't <laughs> because it's just you know I do it all the time so it, it gets annoying um what about a funny story give me a funny trick story a funny trick story a funny trick story I dated a trick who um he wanted me to shit in his mouth I had to eat I could I had to eat like certain shit like he wanted me to eat like sweet shit like ice cream he wanted me to eat strawberry ice cream before I came over and shit in a bucket so and he wanted me to feed it to him I had to put on gloves and shit and it was disgusting I would sit there and gag and shit well ugh, I'm gonna gag right now just thinking about it but I used to see him regularly like he used to he wanted me to go to his house and eat strawberry ice cream no yogurt yogurt and ice cream because it tasted sweet to him and my shit and I remember one time when I had ate like a, a bacon burger before I went there and like I shit it and like fed it to him and he was like ew like he like he spit it out and was like no this is why I told you to eat the strawberry yogurt shit wait wait you're so, telling me you've done this more than one time with the yeah, same person yeah like four or five times yeah he was like a regular but how like 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 how how, how can you eat shit that's like, what I'm gagging I, I, ha I don't know these guys have a lot of like nasty like fetishes out here <laughs> holy shit that's pretty bad yep um was that your worst one yeah because that that was disgusting and i have a i have another one that's kind of racist though all right it's all good this is street boys so you gotta keep it real right okay here. yeah there was this one trick who wanted me he, he paid me 500 because he wanted me to allow while i was fucking him he wanted me to allow him to call me nigger <laughs> And you know, I felt uncomfortable at first, but I'm like, five hundred dollars, like fuck it, like you know, I don't give a fuck, so I did it. And That's he just, guy. he yeah, no, he was Mexican actually, and he just kept calling me nigger. He wanted me to slap him, and he's like, yeah, just get mad when I call you nigger. What the fuck? And I had to pretend like I'm getting all mad and shit. Like, man, I hope you slapped up <laughs> for real. No, I was like low key. I'm like, I'm gonna slap the fuck out of you since you just feel so comfortable with like picking me up yeah and asking yeah. me this shit like okay you should have beat the shit at that point <laughs> <laughs> Damn. that shit is yeah so, all right how, how about this like you said if you had a, if you had a father you felt like your life would have been a little different yeah what kind of messages do you have to the fathers out there that, that are not really there for the daughters um honestly i mean keep your baby close because it's like that's why and and i can only speak for myself that's why i say if i had a father i don't think that i would be out here because that's why i was paying pimps in the first place or that's why a lot of girls pay pimps because they have daddy issues you know they're looking for guidance and someone to protect them and god and that's really what our fathers are supposed to be doing half these girls wouldn't even be out here if fathers were actually doing their job and in their life and making sure because you know we're females
so it's different when you have daughters when you have sons you know it's that's a whole different story but when you have a daughter like you got to worry about shit like this because when we get older we're going to be one of experiencing shit and you know um having sex and all that shit you know the bitch turned out to be a hoe selling pussy because you weren't in her life or, or didn't you know teach her that you know you don't need a man or you shouldn't and that's why a lot of girls are paying men because their father is in to tell them you know you don't need a man you don't need a uh, you don't need to depend on a man or nothing like that but that's one thing my mom did always tell me though is never to depend on no man so that's why i'm real big on that like i don't need a man for shit you know you can't protect me any more than i can protect myself so yeah like just the fuck make sure your <clears throat> make sure your babies are close and because we think a lot and there is a lot of shit that we want to do but we do need that's what we need guidance for you know it affects the way we look at men too my dad was really abusive he was a piece of shit and that's how i look at all men so it's like what the fuck and follow street voices subscribe all that you know these are really good i think it's really cool that he does these interviews so you guys can keep updated and for a lot of girls that are wondering what this life is like you know you guys want to know then make sure you like and follow him <laughs> yep. and my instagram too honey wins spell it out for the slow people h-o-n-e-y-w-i-n-n-s-s -S.